getting a, getting a bit daft, all these boxes turning up, all these unboxings. I'm going to unbox the cat food that I ordered. Is this interesting or shall I turn the camera off? <laughs> what? No, no, it, it, it would have gone with this week's planned vlog. Ah. I just overreacted to the address on the box appearing on the, on the screen and turned the camera away and filmed the door instead so apologies for, to people watching. It still goes with so I got us some blankets for our new outdoor furniture that isn't coming. Great. <laughs> well, we can use it with our old outdoor furniture. Yeah. And then I got some some fake succulents to go in the back of the dinosaur. The dinosaur. The dinosaur. Dinosaur. Very nice. Three faker. Yes, they are three faker. These are from IKEA. Those are IKEA. They're off Amazon. Where'd you get them from Amazon if they're from Ikea? Because it costs like £30 for shipping from Ikea, but it's free on Amazon. Okay, so they're like from an Amazon reseller from the, Ikea? The, it's No, it's from Ikea. Can you keep it down please? It's from Ikea, but they sell it on Amazon. Yeah. They have the frames and small bits. Okay. Well that makes sense. Yeah, but the... Oh, it does make sense. If you're actually ordering from Ikea, the shipping is pretty I know, I know, I'm just being silly. Um, so yeah, anyway. That was like seven pounds for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not exactly what I wanted, so I like it. It's fun. No, it's rubbish. Well, 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 maybe we could think of something because if I can get the bit, the dimensions of that, or little the base of that, I could three D print something that if you stick the top of the plant in the three D printed part and drop it into there, and it would work. Yeah, it needs to be more of a yeah. I see what bushier you mean. Plant. It's a funny shirt. What do you think? What do you think, YouTube viewers? What should we put in the back of Gertie? It's supposed to be a planter, but I think if you maybe filled it like with putty or clay, or something you could do something as well. It needs to be more of a trail on planter. Mm. Yeah, or maybe you so could now fill got, it. So now I've got three feet plants. Well, they come in the bathroom. <laughs> or you could maybe fill it, and then I can three D print someone to sit on it and ride him. Oh. Or her. You don't ride dinosaurs. <coughs> Did we learn Nopper from Jurassic World? It's cruel and horrible. You don't ride dinosaurs. And a bad film. And a bad film. Apart from Jimmy Buffet running with the margaritas. <laughs> Mark's turn with the uh, with the Sierra Schultz on the screen in a bikini. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. So uh, of course. Our furniture didn't turn up, so beer saves the day, as, as it often does. This is something I ordered that also got delayed, and they said it would be arri arriving on the 18th, and, and it did. It's and the I, 18th, was, I was yeah. not expecting it. This is something called a pinter. It's and that was an Archibald. <laughs> and what a pinter is, is a home brewing kit. It's like a start, a home brewing kit, so it's like really easy to do. You don't have, you don't have to mess, you, you just learn the basics of it. Yeah. So we're going to make our own beer. But first of all, let's open it and get inside and make sure it's all in one piece and see what beers we got with it. Assuming they're in here. Because that will really stop us if there's no beers. So. Put your phones under the end of that, be careful. Yeah, so that's the unit. I'm still not entirely sure where the beer is. That's the brewing dock. And there's nothing in there. So we might not actually be able to brew any beer. Although there is something we're doing. There's something about. underneath. Aha! Uh -huh. So the problem with this as an unboxing is I don't actually know what does what. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Isn't that the joy of an unboxing that you find yeah. out? So that's what you brew your beer in. And when it's done. It has a little tap on the front so you can pour your own and it does 10 pints in each crate and a crate costs about 12 pounds so it's bad. like one pound not a pint uh, and it takes i think they were saying seven days from preparing it for it to actually prep but you can do it for longer so is we that, do need is to that do the some, instruction yeah we, there's loads of instructions and stuff so we do need to do some reading up and learning about how it all works mm -hmm. but this weekend we're going to have a go at baking our own beer for the first time ever. yeah should be interesting 
I'm assuming it'll involve a lot of cleaning and sanitizing. Sanitizing, so it'll probably we'll probably end up with a yeasty mess that kills us. <coughs> but you can get cream for that. Yeah. <laughs> All in here. I was going to open this with a pen knife, but I thought it might not be a good idea. <laughs> In here. using his new little water fountain. Yeah. Little pink tongue. Are talking about me either? No. What is Archibald? I was trying to get his mouth out. I think so. You won't want it now. So this is four days of brewing time. Three, it actually tells you on the front of the Four days of brewing, three days of conditioning. Um, and just to give you an example of what it looks like, the stuff that you use. It looks like a really big bottle of aftershave. Yeah. Here it's high up height before you want the fresh press. So yeah, we do have definitely have quite a bit of reading to do before we actually start doing yeah. this. Yeah. Well, this is our Sunday afternoon sorted. Mm. That last one. Um, well, you're just going to drink it like that? Yeah, straight out of the bottle. There's no alcohol in it yet. Um, you know, the, the point of this is that they can ship it without, like, you know... Uh, yeah, because there's no alcohol in it. It's not alcohol because you have to do that yourself. Um, but, what was I going to say? Um, completely forgotten. So it must have been a lie. Must have been a lie. Well, yeah, that's, um, that's an IPA. And this one is the Stars and Stripes American Pale Ale. And I remembered what I was going to say. You can also sign up for Monthly Club. This isn't sponsored, by the way. I paid for this out of my own money. Um, you can also sign up for a monthly club and then they send you a different beer every month. Oh, but right, when you look okay. on the website there's only about seven beers, so I don't know if they just send you the same one every time. They do stouts and lagers and all sorts. So there we go. Let's have a look at some of the brewing pack. Oh, that's attached. It is attached. A bit. This is it's nice and it's all cardboard. Like the picture it? that we can see was taken during the hop harvest in Kent in the UK in 2019. There's a little bit of information nobody needed to know. Yeah. So I'm assuming that this is... Oh, where's the instructions here, look. So it says, oh, I'm going to make that focus. There we go. 10 pints of brew fresh beer at your fingertips. Purify your pinter immediately before every brew. Um, from your pinter pack, add your yeast, fresh press and water to the fill line. Brew your fresh beer at room temperature. Condition it in the fridge and drink on your terms. 10 pints of brewery fresh beer, sharing optional. So we're going to have to fit that in the fridge. It'll go on the bottom shelf. It'll go on the bottom shelf. <laughs> yeah. It'll go on the bottom shelf. Yeah, it's about, it's a little bit bigger than the mini kegs that we order. Yeah. Right, so it's Friday night and we're going to have a go at making some beer. Uh, I've got my phone in your pocket because the way you do this, there's a video on there, it tells you everything you need to do. But we'll just get all of our stuff, stuff prepped first. We're going to make Stars and Stripes American Pale Ale. <laughs> Excuse the noise of the boiler in the background. What's that sticky at the bottom? Should be okay though. We did just drop it on the floor, so uh, these are okay as well. Uh, we have yeast and we have cleaning stuff. Don't mix them up. Uh, the nice thing about this is because you, you use your phone, um, if I go and get the phone out now, scan the QR code on the inside of the box, that won't work better. So yeah, all the instructions now appear on your phone. So we start off with purifying. Get your pints of ready for brewing. This is a critical process with like to use egg chill, the perfect environment for fermentation. I've eaten food and I'm and I can't read. Uh, so yeah, so we have to take this belt and we pump you off and we pull you off. I did some of this last night just as a practice run and then inside here there's a lid that is really difficult to get open. Because that's the air seal though isn't yeah. it? Difficult for a reason. Uh, and that comes off. And that's step one done of the cleaning process. That's step one of nine. For adding, uh, uh, adding purifier and water, set the carbonation down to the carbonated. On the bottom here. 
already set to carbonated that isn't it? Yeah. Cool. That is done. Pour the entire bottle of purifier into the pinter. Purifier. You're getting ahead of me. And it goes. Right, you're gonna have to put up the boiler. No, you put boys from the boiler and you said that noise from the boiler. I'm just gonna, and the kettle behind me. And the kettle. I'm just going to fill this with hot water as best we can and then we'll top it off with a jug. Um, we did check, they do do that on the instructions as well. <laughs> Make sure all the granules are dissolved. Well, uh, they're all in there so I can't see it. They'll dissolve in a minute. So then this goes back on. We turn that round. And it specifically says it has to be lined up like that with the arrow pointing up the top there. The arrow's got to point to the top. I don't know why I'm going into this much detail to be honest. But yeah, <laughs> there we go. Next step. Step number four. Attention is asking me to make sure that this is tightened and it's right, which we've done. Lift the pan to turn horizontally and shape for 10 seconds. Here's the moment of truth if it is it's water tight. It's not water tight. Oh, it's just been in the lid. Yeah, it's fine. Just like that. Step back a bit so we can see your moves. It's <laughs> now that's 10 seconds. Okay. I need to weigh roughly 6 kilos at this point. I think we have overfilled it because that should weigh less than 6 kilos because this. Oh no, no, 10 pints of water. Yeah, yeah. that's fine. To attach the brewing duck, align, this is the, the bit. We have to pop it on the brewing duck because this is actually part of the mechanism, so obviously this has to be sterilised as well. But it's just a matter of picking it up. There's a handle under here, which is handy. Popping it upside down and lining it up on top. Giving it a bit of a jiggle. Jiggle. It's gurgling. Yeah. It's filling the, the bottom part. Yeah, it has to now be spun around to there until it slots into place. So we did that upside down, but it doesn't matter because that's the outcome anyway. Yeah. Well, what I will do, just quickly, just to be sure, is I'll turn it back the other way. Just to make sure our water's gone through. But yeah, that's essentially what just happened, isn't it, on the water? Yeah. Put it into the bottom part. It's a bit cumbersome at six kilos. Just because of the shape of it. Yeah. Ten seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Place the painter in the sink and then hold there with your left hand. So goes in the sink. And then we twist this back. I'll pull it off. I think the first time we're doing this will be a bit of a pain, but in future it'll be much easier. Yeah, once you get into your rhythm. We attach the tap angle. Or handle if you prefer. We don't need the front on this time, but we put the handle on. Pour five seconds into the sink. One, two, three, four. Five. in. So that's the tap purified now. Oh, we're we're basically it. purifying all the yeah. sections that will touch beer. And then we pour all the water in. Yeah, 
maybe a little bit slower than that if you're doing this at all. <laughs> well, that's synchronized too, as well. Yeah. So now I thought that at this point you'd have to give us a good rinse. But apparently, you don't it's because the cleaning stuff you're using it is safe consumption or it doesn't need cleaner. Right, now the exciting part, we're actually going to do some brewing apparently. Two to five minutes. At the water, followed by the fr fresh press to the brewing yeast before leaving to brew. So off we go. Continue. Set one. Ensure the carbonated dial is set to carbonated before filling. We'll double check that, but it was. I'm trying not to touch anything inside because we've just sterilised it. Yes, it is now carbonated. Fill the pint with cold water. Now it says there's a, a marked line in here, which we, oh, I can see it now. Now that we've got everything out, I can see where the line is. So oh, we, we did have a bit too much water in. But that's good, because... It's so like higher up then, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't too worried about too much water for sterilising it. I was more worried about too much water for... Leakage or beer, beer yeah. Because as much as I'd love to get fizzy. 12 pints, it probably would leak. Now, one comment would be, this fill line is really difficult to see. But, I mean, it probably does not, but we're in a bit of a shady part of the kitchen. Quite use of a foam torch does help. So we now pour in all of the fresh, fresh press and brewing yeast. So this is the fresh press. You try not to spill this all over me. That's what that smells like. Pure hops. Probably, yeah. How's it seem? I'm not going to whiff on it. Maybe when I vented it. Oh, it's sealed and it's a pain to get the seal off. You know when the seal rips off? Uh... That means you're taking the milk seal off. <laughs> and then, of course, you know what happens when you take the milk seal off. And it's got the plastic coil underneath. Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's alright, that's fine, wasn't it? Oh, that looks, that looks, um... Syrupy. Syrupy. Mouthfeel. Good noise. It's a bit right and left as well. Okay. What are the tastes and notes on this one? Let's film it. Floral light amber with a mid to high bitterness. Very nice. And I bet I'll read on the, uh, the thing on the back because you can apparently develop them for a little bit longer to make them different. Lid back on that. I didn't have a whiff of it. it. Smells boozy. Well, not boozy, but it smells like hoppy. Uh, followed by the everything's got seals. Yeast. On it. Yeast. Down the hatch. Now, what other spices in the cupboard have we got that we can just throw in? <laughs> Chili. Mm. Paprika! Okay. So then we put the cap back on, which I've popped upside down here so it doesn't get uh, affected by anything else. And I think it was that way around, so the arrow points that way. And then tightened until it gets to there. And then the lid it folds in so you know you've got exactly the right spot mm -hmm. there. Lift the pine to turn horizontal and shake. We like this part. I think in time I'll probably be able to figure out where the handle is as well. The liquid that just came just out there. Just water around the lid, yeah. We now attach the brewing dock. Make sure that that did get all the last of the water in. Right, we'll do it the right way up this time, shall we? <laughs> 
There's uh, letters on it that match up, but they are stickers, so it's kind of like your first time. Maybe we can aim right over it with a pair well, of I think or something. After the first time, it's fairly straightforward, you know. directly above our O2. So we're done. So what do we do now? Stand it against that wall for a bit. Check the French bo press bottle to see how long you get to leave your pinter and then leave the pinter to brew vertically as shown. There it is. Ah. Vertically as shown. So we need to now leave that for four days. Four days. So that's. So we'll one. come back to that. Saturday, one. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. So it'll be. Or is it Wednesday? You come back to Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night. Okay. So Tuesday then. Yeah, we'll sort it out anyway, and we'll come back in four days. Uh, when we're done in four days, then we condition it. And then after we've conditioned it, we drink it and we fall over. Yeah. So we'll let you know when we get on because it's going to be next week's one before we get to the actual condition, uh, yeah. the actual drink. So, of it. to be continued. To be continued. Ding, 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 ding. Birds, a frog, a sheep, a chicken, and a chick. Gemma's just looking at our Kinder Bueno bus trip. It's Friday night. Gemma's home. <laughs> This she hasn't been drinking yet as well, which is odd. <laughs> I feel like there was a much easier way to open that. Probably was, yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're having Kinder Bueno tonight, and we are watching vlogs and having some beer from Black Lodge, which is a new unfiltered lager that they've done. I feel like they might just be little shaped Kinder eggs with none of the Bueno. And, and, and no little, little toys in them. And no little toys in them. Rip off. Now it's cheap. What did you just do? I yeah, dropped it in my beer. <laughs> and bit its head off at the same time. Yeah. These these may be linked. Good morning. It is Saturday and I am home. <laughs> um, I just went to the local Asda having dropped Gemma off. And yeah, that was an experience. Uh, I don't know where the staff have the patience, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, that's all sorted. Um, got just a few bits. We tend to find that we get most of our shopping now online, but every so often I'll just remember something. I can't do this one-handed. I'll sort that out in a bit. I'll just remember something that we haven't picked up. So, for example, my water filter needs the Brita water filters. I like to use the filtered water. Um, and I kind of wanted to buy them online from Amazon, uh, but I wasn't sure which ones. But I know if I go to Asda, I can see them and I can pick them, so I did. But I think that's the first time I've been to an Asda since before Christmas. So, you know, only when things calm down do I go back to supermarkets. When it's hectic, if we can, you know, when virus levels and all that are high, if we can, we shop online. When things settle down, it seems like it's a bit more sensible to be able to do that sort of thing. Um, yeah. Well, that doesn't mean we can get Asda pizza tomorrow because we haven't had Asda pizza in absolutely ages, so we're going to have Asda pizza. Uh, I'm walking around the house again like an idiot instead of just standing still and talking to you. Uh, uh, tonight we have ordered fish and chips again from the chippy because we really enjoyed it last time so much. We're like, mm, let's do that again. So, what about the weekend? Um, not much planned. <laughs> Might do some gardening. Let's get into that point now where the garden probably needs its first mall. Definitely need to pressure wash the flags, but I always say this, and then we never do it. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, someone did ask us if we wanted to do a sit down chat about our experiences over the last 12 months. I'd recommend if you if you haven't seen it, Matt, uh, Mr. David and Mr. Ian's video on that was really good. Uh, they made some very good points that I kind of don't want to repeat. Uh, I kind of agree with what they say, so I'll go and watch their video. Um, Personally speaking, me and Gemma were very lucky. Gemma was furloughed. I continued to work throughout the 12 months. Um, 
we didn't lose anyone close to us. Um, we didn't have anyone close to us sick, which was, I mean, you know, fantastic. It was very lucky. We kind of semi think, I think a lot of people do this, that maybe it came through us in March and we were, so the first lockdown in March, um, Gemma lost a sense of smell and I had two colds in two weeks and the second one, uh, everything I could smell was me metal and taste was metal. But if that was it, we were very lucky and it was very, very minimal. So as a result of that, we always acted like we hadn't had it and continued to act like that uh, and to still do to this day. So, I mean, you know, talking, I mean, I, I know a lot of people are like, regularly re re returning to supermarkets now. Yeah, I mean, they have no choice. They have to go and get shopping and can't do click and collect, and I understand that. Since we can do click and collect, we decided that we were going to do that, and to be honest, we probably will continue to, even after, you know, when we do return to the to, to the new normal. Um, yeah, I think we were very lucky, very, very lucky. Um, we, you know, we count our blessings with regards to that, and uh, hopefully we'll, that will continue for us. Uh, because we know other people weren't so lucky, you know. And I, I did have that experience where I had some ill health last year and I ended up in a hospital. Um, it wasn't a hospital that was at that time treating COVID patients, but I, you know, I was talking to nurses in the hospital about things that were going on and it was eye-opening and they were just amazing. The NHS staff were just absolutely, absolutely amazing the whole way through. Um, and I don't want to take our channel down a politics route, but I'm furious that they've been offered a 1% pay rise. And that's all I'll say on that. Anyway, normal service is resumed. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the reason why I don't want to go through one of those chats, because I might start getting angry with certain things, certain situations. Well, that's kind of natural in this sort of situation, isn't it? It's a very extreme situation, and uh, with some very extreme um, situations come very extreme emotions. Um, but anyway, we're going to carry on, and we're going to have a nice weekend. Um, I think I've already mentioned all the food stuff. I think I've mentioned what we're going to do. So, other than that, I think I've got to sit down and have a minute. <laughs> so, I did some pressure washing of the flights where we normally sit in the summer which was equal parts messy and fun. <laughs> I just gave it a quick going over, so some of the, the bit nearer to the grass is still messy, but we don't really use that area so much. It's where we put the bins and things. Um, while I was doing that rather handily, I got a text message from Argos to say our garden furniture should be here in the week. So next weekend we'll be putting up garden furniture, or maybe somewhere in between. Then we'll be able to relax in the garden again. Well, we can already because I've just brought out the old garden furniture and given it a pressure washer as well. And the barbecue. You know, it's like you get the pressure washer out and then everything needs pressure washing. Gemma's gone round the corner. Hello. Hello. Chips. Chips. Oh, I need to get changed. First. Okay. Is that okay? Changed, then chips. Fish, chips, and peas for me. And Gemma's gone. Sausage and chips and gravy. Let Gemma put the gravy on because she might not want as much gravy as I would want. Good gravy. Good gravy. Ooh. Took in time. I feel like a southern lady. Oh, good gravy. It's good fish and chips. Ooh, what is it? It's too overweight, man. <laughs> <laughs> Out of breath. If you're good, I'll save you a bit. There was so much up in a puppet, not in a good way, but I might. <laughs> How can you resist that? That's cute. Delivery. Delivery. You've got a postman, didn't you? Post for the open door. You had a washing machine. Tweet finger off. Oh, we're watching Mr. Dead in the screen in the background. A efficiency. B for drive. A efficiency for washing. I think it's easy. 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 He's sounded very good. He's already had some. He's already had some. some more, mister. He nearly took my finger off as well. Hence, we've got that. And one of the reasons we got this was because it is A-rated. So we filtered it. Can't resist. It He's so cute. Seconds, it doesn't last two seconds, does it? Though? It did. He loves it. He's been meowing and sat next to me for 15 minutes. He's been meowing and sat next to me for this fish for like the last 10 minutes. He's got a bowl of food over there with 15 minutes. Yeah, he's been meowing and sat next to me for like the last 10 minutes. He's got a bowl of food over there with fish in it. 
It's not, it's not that fish, no, it's not. Sunday morning and we are watching Taskmaster. Series 11. Series 11 and we also just did the... Um, I don't know why I'm pointing at the ceiling. Um, we <laughs> Gemma's making me laugh about cheese balls. Um, we also... Well, I'll just turn around this way, we get the nice light. Uh, we also did the laundry today, so that's all on the line. So that's very interesting, not vlog worthy stuff. I played some games this morning on the PlayStation 5. I've just reset my PS4 to take over to my sister when we can get over there. So we're looking for games for my niece now to see what she can play on that. We're thinking maybe Minecraft or Lego World. Very uneventful day. Uh, we're having pizza for tea, which I picked up yesterday from Asda. Um, about to launch the oven through the window because the, the uh, it keep, we have a, our oven's quite old and it resets the temperature resets to 160 degrees every now and then and of course today it's doing it every single time I set it I think it's just the contacts on the switch it just cuts the power and then uh, resets it so I just got to keep an eye on it uh, we would get a new oven but because we got a gas hob we need an oven that's not too deep uh, all the ovens nowadays are far too deep, so there are. I think there is one brand that does ovens that are quite shallow, so they'll fit in, fit under them. This is one of the things we, at some point, want to get a new kitchen, but obviously, we need to plan that and that's and fund that because it's quite a lot of money. But it looks like it's working now, because because I'm still here. And the minute I go in the living room, it'll reset again. You had a nice day, honey. Mm -hmm. It's been a very relaxed day, hasn't it? it has, yeah. Our oven finally did warm up and then promptly mm -hmm. burnt the pizzas. Well, actually, mm -hmm. it was me. I got distracted, tired and stuff. Um, this evening, we're actually thinking of doing, maybe doing a stream of this at some point just for fun, but we're going to play some GeoGuessr. Geo this is the game where it drops you in Google Maps Street View and then you have to pick where you are on a map and the closer you get to where you think you are, the more points you get. It's fun. It is fun. Yeah. Especially when it dumps you in the middle of nowhere in a weird country. Yeah. And you're, you're looking at signs that you can't understand. Like Wales. And you've got, you've got to try and guess what country you're in. Yeah. It's really, it is really good fun. We'll, we'll try and demon, demonstrate. Demonstrate. But I'll get a game started first. On that. So, so this is, in its simplest form, this is one of the game variants, right? It drops you in the middle of nowhere. And you can use Google Maps to look round and explore. And you basically have to guess what country you're in. So I'm not for this purpose, I'm not actually going to play the game properly, but just to show you, on the map then you'll go, right, okay, I think I'm in... Where do you think, Gemma? First, just from that. I feel like we're in Europe. Okay, narrow it down. What country? Alright, well, guess it's Spain. I don't know if it is. And when you press guess... Uh, <laughs> we'll be in Spain. Hang on. Achievements. We were in Bulgaria. Oh, we were close. Yeah, and that tells you how close you were. So yeah, which is kind of cool. So we're going to play this a bit. So ended at no countries. Yeah. So the, the 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 game is two ninety nine a month or one ninety nine a month if you pay for a year. But you can also pay, play for free once a day on all these game variants. And I think the original game you can play um, as many times as you want. The full game um, it will drop you in a, like a spot like that. And then you have to guess on the map exactly where you are. So you've got to zoom right in and say, I think I'm on this street here. And then whether you guess right or not, you'll, you'll find out then. It's fun. So we managed to get a streak of seven so far. And then it's put us up here on this countryside road in the middle of nowhere. We kind of thinking it's Norway, but we're not sure. Because, I mean, it could be anywhere, couldn't it? Yes, we were right. Streak of eight now. What's he done with you today? Has he not fed you? Has he not fed you while I've been in work? Of course I've fed you. Has he not fed you? The question is whether you ate it. Is he mean to you while I'm in work? Oh, he's a mean daddy, isn't he? So yeah, we uh, forgot to end the vlog again. Um, and we're just about to start the next one, so... So we'll see you in the next one. Can you clean your legs?